Hello, this is Scott from telecoms.com at 5G World, and I'm talking to Alex from Roder and Schwartz. Hi, Alex. Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you. You, you too. So, um, I understand that a big part of what you're talking about at the show today is the IoT aspect of 5G. We know that 5G, yes, it needs to be a lot faster than 4G, but a really big part of 5G is going to be how it supports IoT. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, as you just mentioned, um, yeah, we see this as one of the main drivers that we say um, you have a lot of devices, that's sheer amount of devices that become connected to the network. This is the first challenge and on the other challenge you have quite diverse um, requirements for this device like low latency or high bandwidth or the other way around so it's quite a different and diverse set of uh, manufacturers devices um, that come to the network and this will be um, the first use case that gets adopted for 5G we guess because it's already implemented by now on top of 4G or 3G and so it will be the main driver from our point of view also for, for 5G and um, yeah but um, but of course with this with this drivers a lot of um, challenges are also associated so so from our point of view um, yeah, the network has to become much more efficient and also, um, yeah, the security is quite a big challenge. Actually, on my trip to, to London yesterday, I read a report that was published by telecoms.com and in this report, um, it was mentioned a lot of operators and service providers were questioned and um, it was mentioned that they regard um, the IoT and the security challenges um, regarding IoT as the main inhibitor of the of the monetizing of, of IoT. So, and I'm... I'm yeah, I'm, I'm with this, and this is also what uh, what we, in our experience, see that um, yeah, quite the security challenges are not solved. We have no real um, standardization at the moment going on in this area, and there are quite different approaches that are chosen. There are, let's say, projects like the OVASP IoT project that is more aiming on, yeah, we provide the, the IoT manufacturers with uh, with the capabilities and the advice and the best practices to secure their devices. But on the other hand. Um, yeah, there are other approaches that are that are more dedicated and that are, that are more related to security providers providing dedicated IT security gateways, or or IoT firewalls in general with then low power consumption and all the the, the necessary requirements and feature sets that you have for, let's say, IoT dedicated security equipment. And um, uh, well. Yeah, so obviously there's going to be a lot of considerations there. We're expecting there to be billions of collected devices in the IoT of the future. And of course, you know, you, you, we all watch sort of films where the machines take over and all that sort of thing. And we can imagine a time where someone could hack into some of those devices or control them or just or just uh, hold them to ransom or whatever. So um, I can completely see why security would be a massive consideration. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about your company in particular, Roland Schwartz, and, and what you're doing about this. Yeah, I'm part of the cybersecurity division of Roden Schwartz and our approach is um, to provide network equipment manufacturers, especially in the IoT area and also in the security um, provider area. We provide them with a DPI engine and this DPI engine is run, can, can be run on any platform, it's very power, power efficient and um, you can use this DPI engine to secure all the traffic that is going to the IoT device. It means if you have an IoT um, let's say gateway or an IoT dedicated IoT firewall. Then it, it's from our point of view, it really makes sense to employ a DPI on this on these devices in order to gain the maximum of traffic insights and then to be able to do really atomic policy enforcement, policy management, and also down to the command level um, to secure that only those commands are sent to the IoT devices that are, that you really want them to be sent. Because in general, you have yeah like two types of of, of um, things that could occur from a security point of view. You have, on the one hand, the malicious, intentions, malicious behavior, like when you have a hacker that tries to get into into the, the, the device and maybe tries to steal information or tries to, to crash the device or whatever. And on the other hand, but you also have accidental uh, misusage. That means you you control a device and you just could, yeah, by accident, um, you, you, you turn a volume too loud or whatever, and you do not want to do this to happen. So then you can use the DPI because DPI can provide you really with with um, protocol dissection down to the atomic command level. And this allows you, as a network equipment manufacturer, to really secure the communication to the IoT device and really implement, for example, also whitelisting um, white based on command. So you can then let the user directly um, decide what types of applications, what types of commands um, he wants wants to, uh, to the device to be sent and which ones he does not want to allow. So And then the device is basically perfectly protected from intentional malicious behavior, but also from accidental malicious behavior. So that's Great. our approach in general. Great. Well, that's really interesting. Thanks a lot for your time, Alex from Roden Schwartz.